guys welcome to another episode of Scott Howard Outdoors I'm here at the house real quick home got not much going on here I'm still stuck with this little rental car here so I can't really do much fishing in the boat anyway and the weather's been kind of really whack we had that big snowstorm come through then we had that real big cold snap which froze all the waters around here and plus like I said with this rental car here I got no hitch on like I can't take the boat out to go fishing which is what I want to do so I figured you know what this is a good chance to come on and give you guys a quick tour of the boat uh, ever since I've posted a few pictures on Instagram, I've had people come and say that I, should, that I should do a boat video real quick. So I figured now's a good time to do it. I can't actually go out fishing, so let's go ahead and get that done real quick. All right, guys, as you can see here, uh, what I'm actually running is a 16-foot low Stinger 160. Now, this boat is a 2006 model. I bought this boat brand new from Bremen Marine down in Bremen, Georgia. This is before I moved up to Virginia. I lived down in Georgia. And... It's only a 16 foot boat, but I tell you what, it fishes a lot bigger than it is. Um, this boat has been a great boat for me. I've had this boat all over the place. You know, since I lived in Virginia, it's been in the Potomac, Lake Anna, a bunch of little small electric only lakes around here, which is good for that. And then when I lived in Georgia, I've had, <clears throat> I've had it down on Lanier, I've had it on Lake Altoona, I've had it in Alabama, Lake Weiss, I've had it in um, South Carolina, Lake Hartwell, uh, Lake Rush Richard D. Russell, I mean, all kinds of lakes down that way. I've even had this boat down in Florida uh, fishing for snook down in the um, Saint, uh, down in the Fort St. Lucie, Jensen Beach area, in the, basically in the saltwater in the bay. And in fact, you can see right there in that sign on my wall, that was when I caught my PB snook. That's actually a plaque that my dad gave me. Uh, with this boat, this boat was actually caught down in Port St. Lucie uh, with my dad. I was on 2008, so yeah, that was only, the boat was only two years old back then, but yeah, a lot of great times in this boat, a lot of great memories in this boat. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's done everything it has, that needed to be done for me. Uh, I am probably going to end up upgrading it probably in about two more years. It's kind of my goal. I have a kind of two-year plan trying to get out of complete. I'm going to be completely debt-free. And I'm going to go ahead and be able to buy the boat of my dreams. And that will be the boat that basically takes me on for the next 10 years or so. So, yeah. So, let's go ahead and get on into it. So, here we go. All right, guys. So, here we are. We're going to start off at the front of the boat. And first thing you guys can see here is for a 16 foot boat, look how wide this boat is. Like I said earlier, it's, it's a 92 or 94 inch beam on it. Very wide boat. Um, everyone that I've actually fished with on this boat, they're, they're amazed at how much room there is actually uh, on here. I have no problems fishing with two people. Um, yeah, all, just great reviews on it. That was one of the things that actually drove me to this boat. If you look at the Bass Trackers and a couple other brands, it's, they're a lot skinnier and they don't have as much stabilization uh, as this one does so this is kind of why it chose this boat uh, for the price point that I had at the time when I bought it. Um, a, a great front deck, I love how it works out and it, it's just been great for me. So let's go ahead and start off in the front of the boat. Um, I'm running still the original, this is actually the original, it's 13 years old now. This is the, uh, the, the Motor Guide um, FW46, it's the 46 pound thrust 12 volt trolling motor, this is the original. Uh, equipment that came on the boat. Um, I haven't had any problems with it, to be honest with you. I, I wish it was a lot more powerful than, than what it is. I mean, especially when I'm at, like on the Potomac or on Lake Anna, sometimes like that, where it just, you know, after about four or five hours running, it, it kind of dies out on me, which kind of sucks in a way. But, but other than that, I mean, it really, it does work. Um, I probably just need to upgrade my batteries. It'll probably last a little longer. Um, but it's been a good motor for me. Uh, I really don't want to go out. I've been talking about maybe, you know, possibly going out and buying a new motor, but I started thinking about it. I really don't want to spend any more money on the boat than I have to because I just want to go ahead and, and, and replace it in a couple years anyway, like I said. But so, after a 13-year-old troll motor, it still works great. Um, as you can see, I, it plugs in here like, like a normal troll motor does. Um, I have the original, uh, you know, the foot pedal here. Another thing I don't like about this boat, which didn't actually exist when I bought this boat, was the, the recessed trolling motor. Uh, bay. Um, I think I did try probably about four years ago to actually put one in, but we, when I looked at it, I found that it had some cross beams going across the bow. So if I was to cut those, uh, basically the boat would be, the, the, the deck wouldn't be as stable. So I opted not to do that. Uh, I know it kind of sucks, but you know, I've been doing this for 12, 13 years with this boat. I don't have any problems with it. I'm still, you know, fairly young. So I don't have any back problems, you know, not, knuckly, knock on wood. Um, but yeah, the next boat is definitely going to have a recessed trolling motor uh, bay, which I think most of them all do now anyway. 
uh, this little thing actually I have up here, this is basically a, a st this is called the brake. Uh, this is basically a bracket for the stick it pin that I have. It's basically just a, like a poor man's power pole basically. Um, you can actually see it right there. That's the handle for it. it it's, a, it's an actually an eight foot long stick it pin basically. Uh, that bracket right there is good if you're just, you know, on shore or if you want a beach or whatever, you can take the, 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 the spike and slide it through that hole right there and basically stick it into the, into the ground and kind of, it's a good way to, you know, to anchor the boat when you're on shore. Uh, otherwise, when I, it also comes with a couple lanyards, which is how I usually do if I'm actually fishing, like in the Potomac especially, I'll go ahead and stick it in the mud and put the lanyard, you know, on the cleat right there and I can sit there and fish all day long and that, that's actually what saves power on the trolling motor as well so that's pretty good um, as far as my electronics up here I basically just run a Lowrance I don't know if you can see that but a Lowrance Elite 5 HDI it's basically just a down imaging uh, sonar uh, no side imaging unfortunately and no navigation up here uh, it's not linked to my console one but it gets the job done the down imaging gets the job done and uh, yeah, so I have to go ahead and run that up here when I'm when I'm fishing. Um, again, when I get a new boat, obviously it'll be a lot bigger. Electronics will be a lot better. But like I said, things get it gets the job done when I'm up here. So I'm gonna turn that off and let that run while I'm talking. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So this is basically where all the action is in the front of the deck. Uh, I guess I can go into what's in the in the cabinets later, a little bit later on. But I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a layout of the whole boat. So I'm here in the center now, which I have a pretty good. Uh, area here for you know for for moving around in the in the cockpit it's got a small little base a little console here you know nothing fancy just got my speedometer my tack gauge fuel gauge voltage trim gauge here uh you know i got a couple switches here basically just for you know my lights my live well my my uh my bilge pump got the horn there i went ahead and did add this little light which is a another interior light for the boat when I'm fishing, you know, in the low light hours. Uh, I also run, like I said, uh, this is another Elite 5 HDI. This one does have uh, navigation in it. So it's a, it's a good little unit. I mean, at the time when I bought it, I think I bought these like four years ago. They were actually uh, pretty nice. Nothing extravagant, but like I said, you know, at the price point of this boat, it gets the job done. So I haven't had any issues with that. Um, I, I do keep a little thing that I put in on the front here. This is my little caddy here. I keep my pliers. Got my uh, my scissors in here. I've got some scents, some real stuff. Some, some well, I got some dye there. Uh, let me see. Down there, I keep a couple buoys. Usually, when I'm fishing offshore, or if I'm fishing somewhere, I'll go ahead and take one of those and keep it next to me when I'm in the boat, and that way I can just throw it overboard if I see something, you know, marked like a brush pile or something like that. So. That works out real good. Uh, <laughs> I have my, my, again, my poor man. This is my, my waterproof uh, Bluetooth stereo speaker there. I use that when I'm, you know, just kind of beaching the boat or basically just fishing. I'll have the tunes playing and uh, good to go there. Uh, of course, has two seats, passenger, drivers. Uh, I actually, for a little while, I actually did have a third seat here. It actually didn't come with the seat there. And then I, I paid to have it put in, and then I ended up taking it off because I like using this area just you know ways to get real up, you know quickly up to the to the back deck. But also, what's good about it is now since I'm doing YouTube and filming and stuff, I can actually put my my tripod, which you which you see right there, put tri tri tripod there, have it up here, film. I can have the whole you know filming the whole front of the front of the boat, just a basically different angle from you know if I just have it on the console here. And then uh, let me see. Going to the back of the boat, get my stuff out of here. Again, another big, another big deck out here in the back. You know, I've got the the live well, and you know, another plenty of room here. I mean, this is all kinds of room. Remember, this is a 16 foot, you know, aluminum bass boat. I mean, we got all kinds of room on here. Really stable. Uh, you know, I've actually had three people fishing in this boat. I've had two people up there fishing with me. Another person fishing back here. Had all kinds of room. No problems at all. Really good. Uh, and then uh, I guess I can go into the back of the boat, the power. So the power, basically this is a 2006 Mercury 40 horsepower, four stroke motor. The original motor that came with the boat. Let me tell you folks, this boat, like I said, is, let me see, 2006, this is 2019. So it's 13 years old. 
That motor has never, ever given me any troubles. I take it in once a year, get the uh, maintenance done on it, basically just an oil change, like a car. Um, you know, I think I, one time they did put a new impeller on it, you know, for the, you know, for the uh, little pisser valve there. Uh, but yeah, other than that, this boat, this motor has been great. It, it pushes this boat plenty of speed. I, I get up, when I'm by myself, I'm using about 34, 33, 34 miles an hour. If I have a couple of people in the boat, I still get above 30, 29, 30 miles an hour, which I know it's not rocket speed compared to bass boats that we're used to now, but it gets me where I got to go and I don't have any issues with it. So that's it in a nutshell as far as the layout of the boat. Um, yeah, so that's it. So let, let's go ahead and go back to the front of the boat. Actually, you know what? Let's start in the back. I'll start since I'm already back here. I'll start and see kind of what's underneath the, the behind the scenes inside Scott Hollywood's boat. So we're going to go and do that real quick. So here I am at the very back of the boat. I'll show you right here. This is actually the, uh, the bilge area of the boat. Like I said earlier, I'm running only a 12 volt trolling motor. So I have my 12 volt um, trolling motor battery there. Of course, that one right there is my cranking battery. And I, ha I do have an onboard battery charger here. Uh, as you can see, I'm actually charging it right now uh, for my two onboard batteries. It does have a 13 volt, or 13 volt, a 13 gallon um, gas tank, which with a 40 horsepower motor, I fill that sucker up pretty much lets me last all day on the water. I have I've never, I've never ran out of gas on the water. Um, actually, most of the time, I don't even fill it up every time I go out. I probably can fill it up maybe every other time or actually every third time, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, so that kind of goes on what's going on in here. Uh, let me see. In this one compartment here, basically I have, this is kind of my, my little, I guess you can call it my junk compartment here. I got my ropes in here, keep my fire extinguisher, uh, I got my spare trolling motor prop, uh, my lure retriever, yeah, you know, a rag to, to wipe the boat down when I'm done. Basically that's all that kind of goes in that compartment there. As you saw, this one here is my thing there. This compartment here is basically, I use this as my cooler. Uh, as you see, I still got water in here. What's cool about this is this is actually insulated. Um, so yeah, I throw some ice in here, can keep water, some soda, all day long on here. Um, keeps keeps it in, it's good to go. It's not the biggest cooler. You know, it does drain out, which is good, so it doesn't have to worry about it overflowing or anything. And uh, yeah, so that's what I keep in that compartment. So moving forward here, of course, we have the live well, which is kind of weird. I've, and that's one thing I didn't notice about this boat that was, I never understood actually, was the way the live well is laid out. The lid opens up this way, which you would think it would open up the other way. You know, obviously if you're, if you're putting a, you know, a fish in the thing. I knew on the, on the newer models they actually did fix that. Uh, but yeah, that was kind of a weird thing. As you can see, it's a pretty good sized live well. I mean, it goes almost the whole width of the boat. It does have these slots for, for dividers in here, which I still do have. Uh, also, this little round area right here is for a bait bucket, which I still have, which I actually used when I was uh, fishing down in, um, like I mentioned earlier, down in the South Florida for snook. I was uh, using it for, you know, live bait, live shrimp, and kept, you know, put the aerator on, and it kept the shrimp fine, and everything was good there, so. Now we're back down to the center area as we were before. My life vest. Um, really not much to show you here other than, well, I guess I can, yeah. So I keep my net basically tucked in behind the sheet, seats here. And actually each, underneath each one of these seats, it does have uh, little storage areas here. Like for instance, in this one here, I kind of keep uh, some miscellaneous tools. I keep, you know, this keeps my maps and stuff in here, some markers some extra sunglasses I do actually carry a portable VHF radio in this little box here for when I'm on the Potomac you never know when you got to call somebody or you know check the weather here I've got my my culling tags kind of keep them in there this is my my bag I keep all my my fishing line in I got my my poor man's dude wipes here <laughs> you know you never know when you need it plus me we've all been there so I keep that in there. This is a good little box I keep for, for throwing my keys, my wallet in. It's a waterproof box I kind of keep in there and keep that all tucked away in there as well. So that's kind of cool. In here, this is just another compartment. I just kind of keep my throw, my throw life vest in there. And uh, 
yeah, so that's kind of basically it for this area here. Um, kind of, and I think I did mention I actually did have three seats here at one time, but now that I took the seat off, it's actually a lot better now. I, I can have somebody sit here with that cushion if I needed to, but I like being able to walk back and forth, uh, you know, from the front to the back, and uh, a lot easier there. So keep that. This is all where I keep all my camera stuff in here for the GoPro when I'm actually on the water. So yeah, all right. So let's go ahead and, uh, and dive into the front real quick. Like I said, the main front deck, uh, as you probably can tell, in the center here, basically is where I keep all my rods. Uh, this rod locker is actually pretty good. I can hold the rod up to seven and a half feet. Uh, again, that's the that's the one one downfall of a smaller boat is I can't keep any rods bigger than seven and a half feet. So if I had an eight footer or, or even a seven seven or a seven nine, it actually won't fit in here, which I end up having to just keep it on the deck which actually that's what I have so I'm sitting here like that but um, but overall I mean most of my rods are you know less than seven and a half feet so it fits in here just fine it is lockable so I can lock them up so that's the rod locker there so go ahead and look in my storage compartments here I basically have two of them uh, now the way I do this and you know go ahead and uh, Put in the comment section below if you guys would you know think of something different here i'm still i'm always i'm constantly tweaking my tackle I, i'm always trying to tweak the ways to make storage better it seems like a never ending progress with all of our all, all fishermen i imagine but uh yeah so let me comment below after you see this and what you guys think about it but but basically on this side i basically just keep all my hard baits here i have everything labeled i have them all in my in these uh, we got some car some loud i apologize for that but some loud plane or something flying over like i am in my garage but uh yeah basically i just keep all my hard baits stored in here i got them all labeled you see i got lipless chatter baits uh these are my square bills my jigs top waters um these things actually do work really good i'll kind of show you i mean how i have them laid out i'll give you an example of just uh, i'm not going to show you all my stuff but you know one box basically yeah, see, here's all my, my square bills. I keep them separated by color. Uh, these are, are silent. These are rattling. See all my RBTs here? Mm, beautiful RBT Custom. Love that RBT Custom. There you go. Shout out to RBT Custom right there. But, uh, yeah, there's some good, yummy-looking uh, square bills here. It's one of my favorite types of fishing. But, uh, yeah, so I run all of these waterproof boxes for my hard baits. Really good stuff. I like them. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to show you some old stuff here. I'm going to go back to old school. Any of you guys from Florida, comment in the section below, the comment section down below if you guys recognize any of these old, old Florida baits. Look at this. <laughs> some Nippin' Deedees. Yeah, that's some old stuff. <laughs> some old Devil's Horses here. Look at this stuff. That's some old Florida stuff right here. This is back from when I was growing up as a kid. But you know what? These things still catch fish. Wow, look at that. i got to replace the hooks on that thing. But yeah, these things still catch fish sometimes when fishing is tough. They haven't seen any of these lures in forever. So if I put these bad boys out, wow, some good stuff right there. <laughs> so yeah, so that's that there. And put that back in. Oh, all my stuff here so yeah so chatterbait slipless all my all my uh you know spinner baits i do keep my spinner baits in one of these kind of boxes here instead of the regular ones that they hang on i kind of like these better because i can see them you know clearly without digging through them so i kind of like that keep them there got some miscellaneous frogs and stuff in there some small crankbaits here that i have that i throw actually the First fish of 2019 came on one of those little small uh, crankbaits right there. So yeah, that's my hard baits over here. This is now my. This is where I keep all my soft baits. Now I do have um, the Bass Mafia uh, terminal tackle coffin here for all my terminal stuff. Again, I don't want to go through everything here, but I got all my hooks. You know. Uh, some swivels. I got my spinner, my uh, trailer hooks here. All my tungsten in the back. Some dry uh, drop shot weights back here. Some replacement trebles. 
I still do keep a little bit of lead. You never know when you don't, you know, if you're fishing someplace, you don't want to risk losing a tungsten. You know, you can throw ahead and go ahead and throw some lead on there. Yeah, so I basically just keep all my hooks and everything in here. This, this thing goes with me everywhere I go, even if I'm fishing as a co. This one box would be the one box that it actually does travel with me. Um, what else do I got in here? So here, got my shaky head box, my Ned rigs. Kind of keep them in this box here. I've got two other boxes here. Actually, I'm getting, getting ready to replace more. But these are my swim bait heads. I got some underspins here I keep in there. And then, uh, yeah, and then basically everything else is, is all my soft plastics. Now this is the part here where I'm, I want you guys to comment on. Um, yeah, the old question is how do you store your soft plastics? you keep them in the bags or do you put them in boxes? Well, I do a little bit of both. Um, I keep these big 3703 boxes here, with the exception of those right there. And I kind of have these, you know, separated out. Like for instance, this one here, I have uh, basically my, all my crawls, my creature baits there. Um, actually, no, I got that backwards. Yeah, crawls and creature baits there. Um, these are my, what's in here? Oh, these are my, my finesse stuff. Um, let me see, yeah, it's with the exception of these two. I got my, my, my finesse worms here, my trick worms here. What are these doing in here? Oh, these are the small mini crawls. Actually, these things are good to put like on a net head, net head rig or a, or, or a shaky head. That's money right there. Probably shouldn't have showed you that. Biz baits. Another one of my uh, go-to baits, as you can see, represent them as well. Uh, yeah, I got some old school ribbon tail worms, like old corporate worms there. Here I got my tubes, my Senkos. Yeah, so basically all the soft plastics that I, that I keep in the boat, I kind of keep in these 3701s here. But what I have been trying to do, and I've been experimenting with, and that's why I only have a couple of these like this, is actually taking some of the things out. Like for instance, like here, because I've been watching, been watching a lot of videos on YouTube, a lot of the pros are actually switching over, or they might have always already been this way, but basically putting their soft plastics in boxes like this. Um, you know, like one bag's worth. Like for here, this for instance, these are all my lizards here. I got my, my green pumpkin, my uh, watermelon, watermelon red, watermelon candy, pumpkin, white. Here would be all black, which I'm out of. Here would be like a pink, which I'm out of, and then my black and blue, black and chartreuse. But yeah, these are all lizards I would ever need. Nice little compact box. I can tell. Like I just showed you that I'm out of black and I'm out of pink and I need to get some black in, in the chartreuse. So I'm debating if I should do that with all my plastics. Um, the only problem with doing that is if I, when I'm a co, is I don't want to take all this stuff with me. So, you know, hard is not so bad. I can just grab what I want, put it in another box. But it's a lot harder with your soft plastics if, you know, you have them out of the bags already. So the only other option would be to get like a worm binder and then taking a few of the colors and throwing them in the worm binder, which... I guess that'll work. It'll kind of force you to only use what you need and, and, you know, not have all the craziness in your, you know, with you in your bag. But yeah, so like for instance, like here's the uh, flukes, the same thing. I keep my flukes, you know, you only need like five or six colors, right? So I have, you know, green pumpkin, watermelon. I have my pearl, or actually this is sexy shad, uh, pearl, chartreuse, and I'm out of pink. So again, you know, I think I'm gonna like this technique. I think I'm gonna like this way I store stuff. I, I think it's gonna be good as I go forward. Um, I just kind of have to get used to it. Uh, you know, these bags, these boxes are, are thin, so they're not. They don't take up a lot of room. They actually take up, you know, the same amount as this, as one of these boxes. Like down there, I'm kind of doing the same thing. Here, basically, these are my grubs. You know, I've been fishing a lot of grubs in the fall and the winter time. As you can see, I'm out of them. <laughs> I'm, I don't have, I don't have one green pumpkin, or yeah, one green pumpkin left. And I got a bunch of stuff to fill in here. I've got some Ned baits. Actually, that's where those crawls got to go. They got to go in here because this is more of a finesse Ned rig type, you know, box. So I'll go ahead and do that. But yeah, so comment in the, uh, in the comment section below if you think I should keep the baits in their bags or, or out, out like this. Uh, that's one thing I'm always, you know, struggling with and trying to figure out. But yeah. So guys, that's it. I, I probably, this video is probably a lot longer than I expected it to be. 
but you guys have been asking for it, so I went ahead and did it for you. Uh, but this is it. Yeah, this is my this is my baby, my little Stinger 160, 2006. I love this boat. I mean, it's gonna be sad one day when I gotta give it up. Eh, not really, cause I'll be getting a bigger boat. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's done everything I needed it to do. Uh, a lot of memories in this boat. You know, fish a lot of tournaments in this boat with a lot of friends in this boat. Uh, after about another year and a half or so, this will be gone. But uh, yeah, so that's it. So hey, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I, I finally went ahead and did this. I know you guys have been asking for it. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Go ahead and uh, comment in the comment section below what you guys think of my little boat. Uh, you know, and, and write down there what kind of boat you think I should get. Should I get a full fiberglass boat or should I go ahead and get uh, a nice newer, a little bit bigger aluminum boat? I mean, a lot of aluminum boats the aluminum boat market is really stepping up right now. I miss some beautiful. I mean, I was at the Richmond show this last weekend. I think it's, it's Vexus or Nexus. Wow, the, the Forestell Wood is the one that makes those boats. Wow, that be, that boat was beautiful. Uh, that might be my next boat actually. But uh, yeah, so that's it. So uh, listen, guys, thanks for commenting, thanks for subscribing. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down there below and that little icon with the bell on it. You guys uh, put something new out on there. Um, again, I apologize for the lack of fishing videos. I can't, I mean, I'm, like, as you can see, I'm still riding around this little rental car. I'm supposed to have my boat, my, my truck back within the next day or two, hopefully. And I want to get this bad boy out and get out there fishing. Um, uh, you know, the winter bite, the winter bite is on. So, uh, yeah, that's it. So enough rambling on this video is, like I said, way longer than I expected it to be. But, uh, appreciate everything you guys do. Thanks for following. Thanks for hitting me up on Instagram. For all the folks that came out to the show to say hello, I appreciate that. Thanks for that. And uh, this is Scott Howard Torres, and that's a wrap.